The Simp Hit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're here for a DIY monitor stand. If you're watching this show, this is the short version of the show. I also have the long version where you can follow along and even struggle along with me in choosing the overall design. And at the end of that show, I actually mentioned some flaws with, the that, with that design. So on this version of the show, we're going to go ahead and correct those flaws and build it in steps that are very easy to follow along with, with all the parts you need and all that good stuff. A couple of apologies before I get too far along in the show. I am unshaved because it is just a get dirty DIY project. No point in doing that. Also, I have no microphone on, so the audio might be a little hard to hear, but that's basically because we're working and I can't have that wiring and all that stuff on me. And the last thing I've noticed on these shows, I've had some focus jump. I have it on autofocus because I'm constantly moving around and doing stuff and it does affect it. Sometimes it gets a little blurry, but I try to make sure you always have clear shots so you know what I'm doing. So one thing before I do get too started, this is all the hardware I'm going to need for this monitor stand. So what I do have is my pre-assembled triple monitor mount, which I will show you how this went together in the pieces. That's something else I did improve on from version 1 to version 2, is that I carried over my original one that I've used on many different rigs. This one is a cleaned up version using all the type of hardware I've described in all of these processes, so you can follow along with that when we get to it. So now I am going to clear things off. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and follow along and we'll get this built up pretty quickly for you. The overall design of the stand is fairly simple. It will be two sides that are joined together by three 36 inch cross tubes. Each side will be a mirror image of itself and will be built with one 36 inch tube, two 24 inch long ones and one 18 incher. To join the pieces, we will use one T-bracket, two flat brackets, and four 90-degree brackets with nut and bolts for each one. We will also be adding a fifth 90-degree with its hardware for a cross brace to be added later. The rectangle is made with a 24-inch piece on the bottom, and then a 36-inch piece at the front, and a 24-inch piece at the back, both extending upward. The rear 24 inch piece will be flush at what will be the back and the 36 inch piece is set to the 18 inch length. The entire rectangle is held together with the 90 degree brackets at each corner. I use the T bracket to reinforce the cross brace on the 36 inch tube and then I add a flat bracket to each bottom joint. Once I have everything squared up nicely, I can tighten everything down and I am now completed with my left side of the monitor stand. I can then repeat all of these steps when building the right side, making sure to reverse the direction of the front and back. This will make sure that all of the cross bracing brackets are on the outside of each side. Again, I use a 90 degree bracket at all four corner spots and flat brackets at each bottom joint. For the midway spot on the 36, I use the T bracket to hold the 18 inch cross brace. Now we have two different sides and the next step will be to join them together with three different 36 inch pieces of tubing. In the first steps, I added the extra piece of hardware at the back slot. I can now use that hardware to add the first cross brace joining the two sides at the very bottom in the rear. I am making sure that it is square and tighten down enough to prevent it all from falling over. Across the top, I will add two more cross braces, each being 36 inches in length. I am installing it seven and a half inches forward from the back of the stand. This is the width of my computer and will allow for holding it. I use four different 90 degree brackets and their nuts and bolts to fix it into position. The rear 36 inch cross brace is being held in place with two 90 degree brackets and their hardware. Once I have this flush on the back and everything looks square, I can tighten down all of my cross braces fully. The main base of the stand is now complete and you can see how I have the front legs set back allowing the monitors to sit further back and distribute the weight better than the original design. The triple monitor holder is also fairly simple in design. I'm using my original version as a template, but the angle of my monitors is at about 135 degrees. 
that is about halfway between 180 flat and 90 degrees perfectly square. The holder breaks down into three main parts. Each side is again a mirror image of the opposite side. The left monitor holder is made of two 18 inch pieces of tubing that are joined together with a flat bracket and a T bracket and then staggered about four inches apart. The opposite side is made the same way, but with the opposite stagger direction. The cross brace that joins them together and mounts to the base is a 36 inch piece of tubing. I have added two 90 degree brackets on the bottom and two nuts on the top slots of this tube to be used later for mounting the monitors. I then add the left extension arm with two 90 degree brackets on the bottom side installed at an angle. It takes some wiggling to get them at the right angle, and when you do, you will only want to make them finger tight. I then use a T-bracket to join them to the crossbar with two of the holes on the crossbar side and one on the arm. I then repeat those same steps on the other side with two 90 degree brackets on the bottom at an angle, wiggle it into place, and install the T-bracket on the top side. I have mounted the arms about 27 and a half inches apart and centered on the cross brace to accommodate my 27 inch monitors. In order to join the cross member to the base, I will use four 90 degree brackets. I find it easier to install the two lower ones into a position on the base so I have something to set the cross member on while installing the hardware. At this point, I have just enough room at each end of the tube to add the other two 90 degree brackets on the top side and then drop the cross member into place. I can then add a nut down each slot on the bottom and attach it there as well. Once everything is centered, square, and being held flat against the uprights, I can lock it all down into place. Because of my concerns for this toppling over and I have more room to work with without my monitors in place, I am adding the computer to the back cross braces to add some weight. To make sure it doesn't wiggle, I'm adding a couple extra pieces of hardware to hold it in place. At this point, for most people, I would recommend adding a few Visa adapters to this design. This would allow for perfect monitor mounting. I am being cheap and using 90 degree brackets just like everything else on the stand. I am only using two attached at the top of my monitors where the desktop mounts used to be. I am using pre-installed nuts on the top of the cross member and I have attached two 90 degree brackets to the monitor. Once centered, I can tighten them down making sure it's flush with the cross member. The two pre-installed 90 degree brackets on the bottom are just there to press against the bottom of the monitors to help keep them from wiggling around. I'm using the exact same method for the side monitors except for I do have access to the slots to add the hardware or mounts. In the case of these, I have also added two 90 degree brackets onto the monitors and I have included the hardware to join them to the side arms. I can just move it to where the slots begin slide one side in and then slide in the other. Slide it into position, get it as lined up as possible with the center monitor and tighten it in place. Then repeat for the other side as well and we are all done. We now have a highly versatile, very stable monitor stand that looks pretty good as well. So the monitor stands all finished. It matches the rig. They all go perfectly. The monitors ended up being at exactly the right height. The whole thing works great. And I have a bunch of freedom that I wanted out of this design. Number one, my computer is off the ground. It's nowhere to be seen. Well, you can kind of see it sticking out at the top and the back there, but it's completely out of the way and it's very close. So the cable routing came out very clean, nice, and it worked out for everything. The other thing is this rig has a nice wide stance and I, that was the direction of room that I had plenty to work with. So it was easy for me to accommodate a wider base, especially with how wide triple screens end up being. But that also means whether it's this rig or any other rig that I go to in the future, I have plenty of foot room. I can put that rig as far in as I want, get those monitors right in the right position. And that's very important. Another bonus in the end, it's made an 80-20 profile, just like the rib, which means if I ever want to make changes, adjustments, I've got freedom. I can move these monitors up and down. I could change the angle with the type of brackets that I used. One thing I would do differently, though, is I'd probably put a little more money into it, buy a few Visa adapters, 
put one of those for each monitor so I can get them just right. And there is a little bit of imperfection with height and angle on mine. Not enough to be disturbing, but I am a perfectionist, so maybe that's something I'll add later. The other thing that's different about this show versus the long-winded version, if you watched it, is I made some improvements to design. So I mentioned at the end of the other show that I would have pushed these legs further back on the feet, and I did. And I did that by adding shorter top tubes, the cross braces at the top, and that allowed me to push the overall monitors. The whole monitor thing got pushed back, and that gave me better weight distribution because even though I planned on using the, the computer on the monitor stand, it is dependent on it. Without it, it would have completely toppled over. Now this one I haven't tested to find out what happens if I pull the monitor stand off, I mean the, the computer off, to find out if it topples, but I know it's a better balance overall and that's going to make it more sturdy. So I do have a complete list of the hardware, both the, the, the pieces, the brackets, and the tubing used in this, in this design and I'll have some images there for you to check out. I'll also have the other long-winded show, so if you want to see some of the obstacles that I overcame in the design. Difference in time. First version took me a little bit over an hour. Second time around ended up taking me 25 minutes. So you can see that planning it in advance, knowing where all the hardware goes, really does save time and come out with a more square, perfect design in the end, whether you're talking about the rig or the monitor stand. So I hope you've enjoyed this monitor stand build. I hope it works with your rig if you're considering one. I will have a list of some 8020 profile extrusion tubing suppliers in the link or description to this show at thesimpit.com as well. So please go there and check it out. I hope you've enjoyed this show. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track in my new rig. <laughs>